But justification is the central thing here. And well, Paul Jim said, we are justified by faith in Jesus and not by what? Not by Jewish law. We are justified by faith in Jesus. We are made right with God by our faith in Jesus, not by the law. Now this ties into what did we talk about before that this is getting close to? Two word long technical term? Substitutionary atonement. Substitutionary atonement. Exactly. Now I want you to turn to the letter to the Romans because some of these things Paul doesn't spell out in Galatians, but he does spell it out in Romans. So I want to look there. Look at Romans starting with chapter 3. If you have the same Bible that I do, it's on page 154. Now, what's that? No, that's the same as mine. It starts on 154, Romans 3. Let me just tell you, Galatians is one of the early texts. Thessalonians, we said before, was like the earliest of the Pauline letters that we still have. 1 Corinthians is a pretty early one. Galatians is a pretty early one. Romans, by contrast, is a really, really late one. So Paul's thinking about these issues are a little bit more sophisticated and a little bit more well thought out in Romans, which is why Romans is like long while Galatians is short. Um, it's not just that, but Romans reads more like a theological treatise, whereas Galatians reads more like a little rant. Um, so the reason why I'm looking at Romans is because he spells some of these things out in a little bit more detail, and a little bit more precision. Let's look at chapter 3. Verse 20. It's on the top right column. Chapter 3, verse 20. For no human being will be justified in his sight, meaning in God's sight, by deeds prescribed by the law. Okay? No justification via the law. You cannot be justified by law. Look at a couple verses later. Verse 23. Can I have someone else read verse 23 forward? Jackie, please read loudly. It starts with sins. Uh, sins, yeah. Sins all has sin and fall short of the glory of God, they are now justified by His grace and had, as a gift. Now, through the um, redemption. redemption that is in Jesus Christ, um, Christ Jesus, um, whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement, atonement. By, atonement by His blood affected Okay, pause there. So he says three things here. There's no justification by the law because all have sinned. And by this he means you can't follow the law perfectly, right? You all make mistakes. None of you can follow the law perfectly. I mean, he seems to take it for granted that it's impossible to do it perfectly. How many of you have gone through your entire life without ever breaking a single American law? How many of you have broken an American law? Right? Paul's saying nobody can follow it perfectly. Because nobody can follow it perfectly, you can't be made right by the law. Following the law can't get you right with God because nobody can follow it perfectly. Wasn't he also saying that through your faith in Jesus and your like commitment to sort of like loving one another, you will be following the law essentially? Like you won't be lawless? 
Yeah, he follows up all this stuff. He says you don't have to follow the law. You don't have to follow the law, but you sort of do. But but only in the sense of like love your neighbor and stuff like that. Love God, love your neighbor. He kind of trims it down to what he sees as the essentials. Circumcision is not among the essentials for him. We'll kind of get to that at the end. But there's no justification via the law because all have sinned. Everybody breaks the law. In turn, Jesus' death can atone for those sins against the law. And, again, you don't, you're not automatically covered by Jesus' faith. You only get covered if you have faith in Jesus. So, it doesn't cover automatically just in case you have faith in Him. Can we go on? No. I'm just going to look at another couple things here. Look at verse 28. For we hold that a person is justified by faith apart from works prescribed by the law, right? Apart from works, and by works he means working to follow the law, instead faith. So he develops this faith, works, opposition. Instead of working to follow the law, just have faith in Jesus. Now I want to look at, jump forward, I'm going to look at one other um, line here. If you look at chapter 6, this is forward a couple pages, 6, 23. You have all sinned against the law, and what's the ultimate penalty for sinning against the law? Death. The penalty is death, and he says that explicitly here. Chapter 6, verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, all have sinned and deserve death. Alright, this should all be familiar. I've talked about the substitutionary atonement stuff. This is just repeating it, but I'm showing this is spelled out specifically in Romans. So now you know I'm not making it up. I just read it to you out of his letter. Now, he doesn't spell this out in the same detail in Galatians, but he seems to be assuming this type of uh, reading of the law. Now, let's go back to Galatians to see precisely what he says there. Chapter 2, verse 15. Can I have another volunteer to read? Galatians 2.15. Or whoever, you you made eye contact, so I assumed that meant you wanted to do it. <laughs> I just looked up because I didn't hear where you said we were. Sorry. Volunteer, 215. Jackie, do you want to continue? Sure. Please read loudly. 215? Yep. Page 215? No. Galatians 215. Do you have it? I want to read. What's that? Oh, you know. Sorry. All on you. You read it. Uh, we ourselves, right? Yep. We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is justified not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. Right? You cannot be justified by the works of the law, but instead by faith in Jesus. Keep reading. And we have come to believe in Jesus Christ, so that we might be justified by faith in Christ, and not by doing the works of the law, but because no one will be justified by the works of the law. But in but if in our effort to be justified in Christ, ourselves have been found to be sinners, is Christ then, then a servant of sin? Certainly not. But if I build up again the very things that I once tore down, then I demonstrate that I am a transgressor. Good luck with that. I'm not sure what all that means, because his language gets really convoluted there, but keep reading. I know what the next part means. 